Okay, top five ICOs that might make you a millionaire? Let's investigate this article and go through these ICOs one by one, white paper by white paper. Welcome back, my name is Seth Estrada, and if you're watching this video, you're probably on my YouTube channel, Seth Estrada. And today I wanna to talk to you about some ICOs. Now we've been talking about GPU crypto mining a lot lately and not so much about trading. <laughs> First off, disclaimer, this is not intended to be financial or investing advice. I am not a CPA, but what I do know is how to read. So let's read through some of this briefly and let's talk about some crypto news here. The market is, of course, down in general. Bitcoin has never been so low in 2018. So if you're not looking seriously at Bitcoin, it's experienced the greatest dip and it's about to go through what's uh, called the death cross. And before we talk about these ICOs, let me just briefly mention death cross. Let's go to Investopedia. What is a death cross? Death cross is well, it's a crossover from a security's long-term moving average breaking above its short-term moving average or support level. So right here, if the 100-day moving average is broken by the 50-day moving average, that's a death cross. And usually, if every single exchange experiences this death cross, well, at least in traditional investing, it's called the four horsemen of the apocalypse. But what we're seeing with Bitcoin and with the crypto market caps is that we're nearing a death cross. Now, what you do with this info, what you do with this knowledge is entirely up to you. For those of us who are in crypto for the long haul, we only view this as a good thing. And in my personal opinion, I view this as a strong buying signal. So that's Bitcoin in general, but let's talk about ICOs. Let's talk about some ICOs that apparently might make us a millionaire. Thank you, Gabriel Dume. And I can't find you anywhere else, by the way. This, this account on CoinStaker doesn't actually lead to any info. You might want to update your profile if you're a real person. So the top 10 most profitable ICOs ever, they have them listed here. You can see NXT, Ethereum, of course, several others that will ring a bell, but Ethereum and NXT being really, really large as their blockchain 2.0 projects that are intended to be built upon. But ICOs, well, they're kind of a different game in 2018. The fact that any ICOs had breakout numbers in 2017 is amazing, but it's only encouraged several unqualified entries in 2018, in my opinion. They say Telegram ICO is the top of the list. I disagree, but we'll get back to that in a little while. They already have really great user base and really great speed and scalability within their current platform, Telegram. So if the Telegram Open Network or TON token, if it adds to that functionality by doing anything, having any utility to build on top of it, then yeah, that may well be, be a winner. Integration into the Telegram app means there's already a user base of millions. So it's a pretty big deal. Kodak ICO is second on their list and it has to do with rights management, which is an interesting proposition when tied to blockchain. Blockchain and distributed ledger technology, one of the key distinct advantages of a distributed ledger technology is ownership models and um, <clears throat> anything that can be put onto a ledger, right? So well, even local governments would be well advised to take a look at blockchain technology and distributed ledger technology for record keeping. And Kodak apparently wants to do just that. What do you do when people stop shooting photos on film? You, you make an ICO. That's 2018. Welcome, welcome back to uh, the world of blockchain. Cointed ICO. We'll look at this a little bit more in depth, but their product is essentially crypto ATM machines, which is a little redundant, isn't it? it crypto automatic teller machine machines, whatever. That's copy in 2018. We're used to this also, but that's what Cointed makes. That's what they're doing. That's why it has any utility. Uh, why it might make you a millionaire. Ooh, if it succeeds, well, yeah, it is a pretty big deal. But I think that the SEC may have something to say about crypto ATMs, certainly in the United States and around the world, there are serious hurdles. Agrotech Farm ICO. Interestingly enough, their token is ATF. Let's just think about that for a minute. Yeah, here in the United States, that's an interesting name for a token. Granted, I think they're primarily targeting the Canadian market and then international markets. Why am I making a millionaire? Now this one should be painfully obvious. It's couched right in the middle of all of the others, but it should be painfully obvious that anything having to do with cannabis could make you a millionaire. That said, selling cannabis on the street can make you a millionaire if you know which neighborhoods to sell in. So buyer beware. There are serious inherent risks here. There's a lot of legislation regarding cannabis that is just kind of up in the air. So 
adding that to blockchain technology and the volatility of blockchain markets and crypto markets, you know, it's um, it's it's double risky. That said, there could be huge upside where there's volatility. There's huge potential upside. Envion ICO. It's listed here among the top five ICOs that could make you a millionaire. Well, why it might make you a millionaire? We'll go through this in reverse order. The bottom line for the Envion ICO is that they say it could make you a millionaire. That's why people think it could make you a millionaire. Here on Twitter, Envion, they show their mobile mining unit. It's essentially a shipping container. This is not a new design for mobile mining units or for crypto mining. What is unique about Envion is the placement. What's in the background? Bunch of solar panels. Where is this placed? Well, it's placed near to where power is being generated. And Envion claims that they're going to be able to do this better and more efficiently than anybody else in the business, that they will broker these deals. And that as an ICO bag holder, that first off, you need to be a qualified investor, an accredited investor. They're not just taking money from anybody. They're making sure they play by the rules. So that's interesting. But their value proposition is we are a giant decentralized mining operation. Let's think about this. I don't know that this makes them all that different from cloud mining. Realistically, what they're creating is infrastructure and what they're selling you is a shipping container full of mining rigs, ASICs and GPU mining rigs. It's interesting. And yes, they've raised money. For me personally, I don't think that the promises of turning into a millionaire overnight are going to pan out. Let's take a look at the market cap of their current token because they're already on the market right here. See the chart for... EVN. Now, while that loads up, here we are on MoreCoinMarketCap.com. And as you can see, uh, we'll just track it in US dollars right here. Bitcoin, of course, isn't the perfect indicator because it's going through its own slump. But right here, we had a spike sometime in February. Uh, yeah. So anybody who was early on the ICO and got in at 70 cents or less, they doubled their money for one day. But otherwise, you know, it kind of just kept on declining from launch until today, even coming in at 70 cents, you're nearly at half of the value of your original bag. I don't know how this is gonna pan out and here's here's my concern. I could bring up their white paper, I would rather not. There is some decidedly unscientific terminology in the white paper and, it, and, and while they've gone to great lengths to say, essentially, we're gonna be really good at managing a portfolio that you help us mine, that's what's happening. These mobile mining units, you are funding for what is essentially a centralized mining operation being placed decentrally that they are then centrally managing for you. You do not manage these mobile mining units and you do not manage the portfolio for them. They manage it for you. They're distributing profits through tokenization, but you're essentially just receiving profits from this mining rig that you've helped them fund. And it's very strong, very highly possible. And in my opinion, potentially even suspect that they have earned money on build out of these mobile mining units, that they're not passing along direct cost, but that they're actually wholesaling this equipment to early ICO stakeholders. I'm a little bit concerned. I'm a little bit wary of Envion. I think that they mean well, I really do, but I don't believe that this falls into the category of what people should be doing with an ICO. If you're so confident in your ability to build hardware at scale and to manage a portfolio, why not just go to, for example, a bank or to a hard money lender, put your money where your own friggin' mouth is. That's my concern with Envion. I know that's a harsh way of putting it, but that's my concern. Why do an ICO when if your business is so sound, you could go to people who could fund the entire amount up front, you get started mining today, and you guys could manage your own portfolio, and you could you could hold the entire bag on your own and not owe anybody anything except for the cash, the fiat that you borrowed in the first place. All right, so that's Envion in a nutshell. I don't think it's going to make you a millionaire in 2018. Wah, 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 wah. Let's talk about Agrotech Farm and the infamous ATF token. So the pre-ICO stage is, well, they're still there. 10 more days of pre-ICO. And apparently they're currently, uh, gosh, what is this? Where, where are they? 178 Ether so far. So I don't think they're quite where they want to be. I think for their projections, they want to get to around, and they mention it explicitly here, they want to get to around between 1.5 and 4.5 million in initial funding so that they can create microclimate, aeroponic, and hydroponic growing systems. Now, this, I think, actually has some merit. They talk about it being for cannabis. So again, it's speculative. It's risky. 
there's real volatility in this market, cannabis already, even if you're not already on blockchain. That said, they have two different models and they call it a home grower. They don't call it a cannabis grower per se. It's called Agrotech Farm because it is intended for multiple uses as hydroponics and aeroponics can be used for multiple uses. Again, open disclosure, I am not endorsing the use of cannabis per se, but I'm not discouraging it either. My views on the legality, well, they're my own views and mine alone, but they vary from state to state, from country to country. And so investing in an ICO like this could be tricky, depending on where you are in the world. They even say so themselves. It's got a lot of disclaimers in this white paper. And this white paper, it reads almost like a prospectus, but then they go out of their way to say that it's not a prospectus because they have to be very, very careful about what uh, what they're saying here. They've really hired some great minds to write this white paper and to frame this correctly so that it's not overly speculative and you don't get stuck in a bad position, or they don't get stuck at least in a bad position, attempting to sell something that they can't really deliver on. So right here, market industry and information, terms and definitions, they go through quite a bit here, abstract of their current business. And then the two products, ATF Home Grower Strawberry and the ATF Home Grower Cannabis. They also go out of their way to list competitors. So they've really, they've really gone out of their way to make sure that you understand what your options are. Again, unlike Envion, where Envion is essentially saying, hey, look, we're doing something that's so unique. No, you're not. There are there are mines all over the world that are set up next to uh, hydro power stations and solar power stations so that they can do exactly what you're doing. It's not unique. It's not special. Right here, ATF, they're acknowledging who their competitors are because yeah, hydroponics and aeroponics also not new. This is not a new concept to anybody who's been involved in farming or in generating microclimates for farming, um, like greenhouses, for example. Right here, Canada, that's where they're primarily targeted. And then USA, these are hot markets, right? Where the USA is still kind of deciding what they think of cannabis uh, at the federal level and at the state level. And then the token and then some information for it with the roadmap right here. Again, they if they only get $1.5 million, this is what they're going to do. But they are using their examples based on the middle of the road. 4.5 million, I believe US, not Canadian dollars. So they show you their product right here. This is what you're getting in exchange for investing with them in their ICO. The tokenization, I, this is where I struggle. Does this require an ICO? Could you fund some other way? Like for example, Reg CF, the United States government already, and the SEC already allow for you to raise funds doing crowdfunding. And if you're talking about a uh, worst case scenario of only about $1.5 million, Reg CF, from what I understand, again, this is not intended to be financial or consulting advice per se. If you were my client, I would go a little further out of my way to, uh, to get you the, uh, the chapter and verse on this, but I believe that Reg CF will allow you to raise, I think just over 1 million, barely over $1 million. So your worst case scenario could be fulfilled a different way. You don't need an ICO for this. You don't need to tokenize what you're returning to investors either. So I'm a little bit confused as to why this needs to be an ICO. The product seems cool though. The team seems to have done their homework and yeah, uh, I think that this this could be really transformative for the cannabis market and the growing um, need for cannabis to be grown at home, as well as other hydroponic solutions just for vegetables. If every single home in the United States had a small herb and uh, and vegetable garden like this, well, America would be healthier. We'd have less problems with obesity and there would be all kinds of uh, additional benefits, right? In a down market, the economic downturn would not have hit so many people so hard. We could potentially have fewer families on food stamps in this country and other forms of welfare. This is a pretty big deal in terms of the product to your right. The product to your left, still very volatile. And again, I don't endorse the use of cannabis, but I don't endorse its prohibition either. I think that decriminalization is probably a good thing and legalization, probably a net positive for society at large. So check them out for them to be able to automate a lot of this by including the correct lighting and then generating the correct microclimate as well as a, a watering and and nourishing and feeding the, the plants that are inside. Um, no pesticides are necessary because it's a fully enclosed climate. You don't need to worry about bugs crawling into this because it's totally, totally locked down. So you've got a, a pretty amazing mix of technologies that make it, make it possible to yield vegetables faster. So almost 30% faster because they create the ideal growing conditions. And then the maintenance costs they say are, are really, really low. Plus you can control it from your phone. Wow. Uh, the manufacturer's warranty, 
two years, which is, I, I don't know. I mean, if you're looking at farming and you're growing stuff in this machine, I would hope that it lasts longer than two years, but it's a pretty high tech device. They've got to place some limits somewhere, I guess. Agrotech Farm, I want to see a longer warranty. Personally, I want to see a longer warranty somewhere along the lines of five years. If I were to buy something like this for an urban vegetable garden, well, I mean, I would need to know that it's going to amortize over five years or more. So please strongly consider giving us a five-year warranty on a device like this. The, again, the product to the left, I'm unlikely to buy. I don't think I'm your target market. But the product to the right, I'm very interested in. And because I'm interested in seeing some of these, uh, some of these laws change, vocally support your ICO right now. Disclosure, I don't earn anything by, by making that endorsement of AgroTech Farm. I just think it's a really cool idea. And I love that they're acknowledging that there is competition in the market. I love that they're being much more transparent about what the heck they actually provide. Do I think it requires an ICO? No, but that's the route they've chosen to go for their crowdfunding. So they're already committed to that course of action. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue that that's an okay way to go in 2018. Moving on to Cointed, there's not a whole lot about Cointed. They're not listed yet. So for example, we can't go to CoinMarketCap and see what their token is trading at right now. What do they got? Tell us. The future of money, yet again. We are a multi-service provider for blockchain and our work concentrates on four main areas. Sure it does. For one, our ATMs, both in one-way and two-way design. At the one-way ATM, you can only buy cryptocurrency, whereas at the two-way ATM, you can also sell it. At the moment, we operate over 100 ATMs, 75 of which are in Austria, five in Italy, two in Hungary, and one in Mallorca, Spain. So note to self, if you want to actually buy Bitcoin from one of these ATMs, move to Austria. The next important point is our exchange, which is a full-fledged cryptocurrency exchange where you can buy, sell and trade with cryptocurrencies. We want to succeed in offering a website where people are able to get all kinds of blockchain related services they may need. From like ATF coin? Furthermore, we have a payment interface called Payco which enables every business to accept cryptocurrencies. Okay, well, now there's some other e-commerce providers that, as you know, I've covered before, and they already do this. But let's... Uh, okay. We also practice mining, which means we develop our mining rigs or software ourselves, which we power with renewable energy at all important locations worldwide. To me, it is important that people understand that we are a young company. Young like your employees are all young? Because that doesn't instill confidence. Switched to an LTD in 2016 and are now a big corporate structure. Our numbers increased rapidly. We are in principle trying to create an ecosystem for everyone in blockchain, to reach as many people as possible and to thereby satisfy everyone's needs. Wow, that was a really cool move. They all turned to the side. You guys do that one more time. This time, turn the other way. No, seriously, let's, let's see it. Everyone's needs. Guys, I asked you to do one thing. Good grief. Okay, there's Cointed. Cointed in a nutshell, in their own words. So I'm not really sure what to think about this as an ICO. Why do you need an ICO? Why do you even need a, a why do you need a token for this? If you're operating ATMs, you should be able to create enough margin from just doing exchange services and create your own exchange that you, I mean, over time, sure, I guess create your own token for trading. Binance is doing it. Yeah, the other exchanges do it, right? So create their own, their own coins and their own tokens so that trading on their own exchange is a little bit simpler. And it's another form of revenue generation for the exchange to make it sustainable. But with this, is it too soon? Maybe, is that my concern? Maybe? Over 4,000 Ether? No other tokens left to sell, I guess. They've, sell, they've sold 6 million of their, their CTD token, but I just can't, I can't find it anywhere. That's, that's my biggest concern here. CTD token price, can we find it? No, no we can't, but I've already got that open up. ICO Bench talks about it, the future of money, and they just repost the video that's already there. Now the team is a little more transparent, which is awesome. It's great that we actually see people. Again, I made a wisecrack about them being really young. Yeah, relative to, to more established financial institutions, maybe they are a little bit younger, but they just mentioned being a young company. So yeah, I take it back, guys. Fine. Whoa, whoa. 
KYC report not conducted yet? Let's get on that, guys. ICO bench, I expect more. Milestones, they got their exchange running Q4 of last year, so uh, maybe it is the right time for them to launch their token. I don't know. I think it's an interesting idea. However, the concept of crypto ATMs, not new. It's not new, right? It has been approached before. Um, is it still needed? Yeah. And are there, is there room for new players? Yeah. Oh, rating of 2.8. Well, it looks like, yeah, again, so there are some others that kind of agree with me here. The ICO profile, not great. I think it's too soon also. Maybe it's the right time for them in terms of their trajectory, but I think they probably need to be operating as an exchange with a real name behind them for longer before launching the token. The team apparently doesn't instill a whole lot of confidence yet either. The vision for where they're going, essentially they look like an exchange with a lot of mining operations throughout the world to help support their own ability to be real players on the exchange and maybe in their own pools. And then the product, not super revolutionary just yet. Let's see what ICO Bench says about them right here. Oh, wow. Okay. Eesh. Some are even more critical, but right here, the most critical is a person who carries the highest weight. Asking all the right questions right here. So name a single bank or intermediate that's even willing to provide liquidity for such transactions. When you get fiat from them that was originated from cryptos with an unknown source of capital, any reputable bank will immediately block such transactions and you will get problems with compliance. I happen to agree, Nikolai. There are some real issues here when you're not mentioning who your financial partners are, but you talk about being an ATM. And then we're currently in the final stages of acquiring bank licenses. Yeah, you don't want to be in the final stages when you announce your ICO. You actually want to have already done it. All right, let's talk about Kodak Coin or Kodak One. Very interesting concept. What is it supposed to do? Oh, it's efficient. Yay! Image economy. Transparent. Okay, let's talk about this. Image economy, there's been a serious issue with creating intellectual property for some time. Creative Commons made some great inroads on intellectual property in a sort of digital era. So why is Kodak here to do this? What is it exactly they hope to achieve with this? Well, they say that their mission is to create a sustainable token-based community for the world's photographers and then the supply chain from photographers to rights holders and buyers of imagery and image-related IP. Is this a good thing? Is it needed? Does it matter? Does anyone care? Well, I don't want to go so far as to decide for anybody if they should care. But what I will say is that right now, if you look at stock photo sites, earnings from stock photography and stock video are the lowest they have ever been. As a business model, it's been devalued to the point of it. Wait, really? Somebody's calling. Should there be any more quote innovation or quote disruption in intellectual property and rights management. I don't know that any of this stuff matters. It, rights management already exists. Image registration already exists. Digital watermarks already exist somewhere else. I don't know that it matters today. I think this would have been an important thing to see happen in 2013, maybe 2014, right when Ethereum launched to uh, build on the Ethereum blockchain then and launch a token sooner. I don't know that this is the right time. The team might be right. They've got experience. The advisors, definitely right. You've got real players here, but I don't think it's the right time. That's just my personal opinion on it. I wouldn't discourage anybody from investing in the Kodak One ICO. Again, this is not investment advice. Do your own research and speak to an advisor who specializes in ICOs. My personal take on it though, is that Kodak One as, as a utility token, I just don't think that it's the right time. I think you're a little bit late to the market personally. Sorry, Kodak, I love you, but I don't think this is the right time. Telegram ICO, boom, it's the top of their list here. And uh, the farther up the list we go, the more I think there's strong upside, but they're actually seeking out qualified investors, accredited investors here as well, because Telegram is so high profile, they really can't afford to get painted into a corner by regulatory commissions. So they kind of need to operate a little bit more traditionally. Everybody's calling it an ICO, but is it really an ICO? No. Uh, ATF is more a crowdfunding campaign. Kodak is a crowdfunding uh, crowdfunding investment, crowdfunded investment. We're calling it an ICO because there is there is some utility maybe on some of these blockchains. Kodak One promises some utility. Agro, um, te Agro Tech Farm, I don't know what utility their blockchain actually offers. It really is more of a security token, right? It has to be. 
but you're getting a physical product in return. And beyond, I, I have no idea what you're offering in exchange. I don't, I don't know what your real utility is. And I don't know why I would invest in your mining infrastructure when I could go and spend the exact same amount you're asking for on my own mining infrastructure. Telegram, I think I get it. There is some real utility that they're promising with this. How do I know? Because here's the white paper. This is where it gets good. Here's the primer problem statement. And let's, let's go through everything else. Doop, doop, doop. Bitcoin has established itself as the digital gold, and Ethereum has proved to be an efficient platform for token crowd sales. However, there's no current standard cryptocurrency used for the regular exchange of value in the daily lives of ordinary people. What does that even mean? It means that they haven't paid any attention to Monero or Zcash. But the blockchain ecosystem needs a decentralized counterpart to everyday money, a truly mass market cryptocurrency. Despite their revolutionary potential, existing cryptocurrencies, let's mention Dash here as well, existing cryptocurrencies lack the qualities required to attract the mass consumer. Uh, such as what? A highly fungible, portable, and divisible? Again, see also Dash, Monero, and Zcash. The established blockchain networks, Bitcoin and Ethereum, play roles, important roles in the ecosystem, but don't have the capacity to, res to replace Visa or MasterCard. Their current architecture, they're limited to a maximum of only seven transactions per second for Bitcoin, 15 for Ethereum, resulting in insufficient speeds at higher transaction costs. With that, I agree. As we all know, if you've ever had to do a transaction with Bitcoin or Ethereum recently, it's not so great. And transfer fees are, of course, increasing as a result. But regular users starting to engage with Bitcoin and similar technologies often get confused when trying to buy, store, or send Bitcoins. Uh, probably also true. It does need to be a little more user-friendly. But again, see also Dash, Monero, and Zcash. Outline of vision, speed and scalability, an intuitive user face, and engaged user base. Okay, that's great. Um, and Telegram can probably deliver on an engaged user base and an intuitive user face. Probably. I mean, let's not get into a Telegram versus Slack flame war here because... You know, we know which direction that's going to go. With speed and scalability, I think they've proven that they can create a network that is pretty fast. Let's talk about what, not their history of Telegram, you can look that up on your own, but let's talk about what it is they intend to do with the ton blockchain. Infinite sharding, that is cool. Blockchains can automatically split and merge to accommodate changes in load. It means new blocks are always generated quickly and the absence of long queues helps keep transaction costs low. Pretty cool. Instant hypercube routing. Ooh. Smart routing mechanisms to ensure the transactions between any two blockchains will always be processed swiftly regardless of the size of the system. Time needed to pass information between ton blockchains grows logarithmically with their number. So scaling to even millions of chains will allow them to com all communicate at top speed. Proof of stake approach. That means there will not be mining per se. There may be master nodes, but not mining per se. Proof of stake approach in which nodes deposit stakes to guarantee their dependability and reach consensus through a variant of the Byzantine fault tolerant protocol. This allows Ton, well, the upshot of it is that it allows Ton to focus on computing power of its nodes on handling transactions and smart contracts, further increasing speed and efficiency. Now, will there be, will there be an open node? Uh, will there be like a, a, a node token reward system? Meaning, could you go out of your way to purchase a master node? and then earn daily rewards from having a masternode. Ah, we have yet to see. And then 2D distributed ledgers can grow new valid blocks on top of blocks that were proven to be incorrect to avoid unnecessary forks. It's a self-healing mechanism to save resources and guarantee that valid transactions will not be discarded due to unrelated errors. Pretty darn cool. This should make it a little more fault tolerant. This is what they actually want to add by way of utility. This is what makes it special. This is what they're actually doing to solve problems. Ton storage. It's distributed file storage technology accessible through the ton P2P network and available for storing arbitrary files with torrent-like speed. Awesome. Smart contracts used to enforce availability. So it not only enables storage services that are akin to a distributed Dropbox, again, think Dropbox on BitTorrent crack, paves pathway for more complex decentralized apps that require storing large amounts of data, such as YouTube or <coughs> DTube. Yeah, IPFS much, or Telegram. That's a problem that IPFS is kind of already solving. Let's just acknowledge that right now. Ton proxy, network proxy anonymizer layer that's used to hide the identity and IP address of ton nodes. Similar to I2P, the Invisible Internet Project, this layer can be used to create decentralized VPN services and blockchain-based Tor alternatives to achieve anonymity and protect online privacy. Are there services, widespread services that do this? Well, yeah, Proton VPN does that now with Proton Mail. Is it 
decentralized across a new blockchain? Uh, no, it's not. So I wonder how many proxy services are utilizing blockchain? Ton Services, a platform for third-party services of any kind that enables smartphone-like friendly interfaces for decentralized apps and smart contracts, as well as a worldwide web-like decentralized browsing experience. Uh, this sounds an awful lot like our other web, our other uh, blockchain 2.0 services, like Ethereum, like Ardor, like Quantum. So I don't really know what that means. And then Ton DNS, service for assigning human-readable names to accounts, smart contracts, services, and network nodes. This is so important. This is actually an extremely important step in the direction of making it more accessible to the everyday consumer. And then Ton Payments, platform for micropayments and micropayment channel network can be used for instant off-chain value transfers between users, bots, and other services. If you don't already know, Telegram is open to bot services like ChatFuel. So this is a pretty big deal too. What if you don't want to be locked into as an e-commerce provider selling on Facebook using their chatbot network. Well, you have options now. This is kind of a big deal. In terms of a platform, it's also very lofty. And they're a new bot platform. I don't know that it needs its own new bot platform, but you can connect bots that offer exchange services, effectively creating a competitive market. Again, mentioned it before, I don't necessarily want to sell on Facebook. And hey, guess what? A lot of other people don't either. Some people that you may have heard of who recently and in a very public way have stormed off and said, I don't need you, Mark Zuckerberg, and your company is not serving our best interest. I'm out. Groups and channels, if you know Telegram as a product, it already supports this, but it's not something that's easy to commercialize. So the ton-based ad exchange will allow for ads that will live on the blockchain as well. Remember the controversy of Facebook pumping the numbers of video views, absolutely fleecing advertisers. Adpocalypse on YouTube caused serious problems for content creators. So if Ton can work on an ad exchange that is honest and transparent using blockchain technology, well, it's a step in the right direction. And you'll be able to do something that DTube has committed to not doing, which is including advertising and integrating that into hopefully a censorship-free environment. Digital content, physical goods, if you're talking about basically creating an e-commerce gateway or an e-commerce platform that is that contains less friction than, say, other e-commerce platforms, then, well, I welcome it. And then decentralized services, hopefully there's just more on the horizon. Hopefully there are more developers who are interested in it in the same way that the Ethereum virtual machine should be attracting developers, but being able to develop in only one computer programming language has maybe caused a delay, I'm just going to say. Hopefully they can solve that problem too. It goes through their timeline, goes through all kinds of other use cases. Let me just sum up my take on this article and these top five ICOs in this way. I really do think that this order, it's not too out of place. Envion, I don't get it. Sorry, guys. I just don't see the need for what it is that you're offering. Agrotech Farm, I think it's an important direction. Is it too early? Not sure. I think maybe it's just the right time for a company like Agrotech Farm to release a product like their aeroponic and hydroponic growing station. Pointed ICO, I don't know why this ICO exists. Yeah, I just don't get it. If you have already been able to mine so much cryptocurrency on your own, why not use it to fund your own ATMs and then set your fees for exchange rates accordingly? When somebody uses an ATM at, say, an airport or an amusement park, they expect to pay a $4 surcharge because that's the cost of using an ATM under those circumstances. Why wouldn't they just expect the same thing from your ATM? Why did you need to raise an ICO? Why did you need to create a new blockchain to talk about your ATM? I don't think that was necessary. And frankly, I don't want your token. So if I have to use your exchange in order to get fiat currency out of my crypto accounts when I'm, say, at Disneyland, then fine, so be it. But if you can't get it placed into Disneyland, then that means you don't have the proper financial relationships in place to get fiat from my crypto accounts anyway. So your blockchain doesn't help. Kodak ICO. Kodak, love what you guys have done for photography. And I love the direction that you've been trying to go with your new products in terms of digital photography technology. I don't know that this ICO is something that I'm interested in as a content creator. I think there are other ways for me to enforce copyright. And then Telegram ICO, I have high hopes. But the reality is, if you're not an accredited investor, they're not looking for your money 
anyway. So are these going to make you a millionaire? My take on it is not in 2018, not unless you already have a million dollars. That's my take on it, guys. If it looks too good to be true, it very possibly is. Don't expect to turn your $10,000 investment into a million dollars or your $45,000 investment into somebody else's mining rig into somehow a magical seven or eight figure exit. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for clicking the subscribe button down below. Thank you for clicking the bell icon so that you're notified when new videos drop. You're the reason that I make these videos. Love your face and I will see you in the next one.